Hello and welcome to Feels Like Home, a podcast all about Australian homeschooling. I'm Kelly Cottonides, a homeschooling mum of five teenagers, and I also run Fearless Homeschool and the Australian Homeschooling Summit. Now, homeschooling is a whole new way of life and learning, and in Feels Like Home, I bring you useful tips, stories, and ideas from homeschooling parents just like you. We share strategies for dealing with the highs and the lows homeschooling brings, and for transforming challenges into opportunities for learning and connection with your family. We want to help you to create a homeschool and life that you love because it is definitely possible. So let's get started. Hey everyone and welcome to the very first solo episode of Feels Like Home. It's just me for this one. So I had a couple of requests from the Australian Homeschooling Summit asking about yearly schedules. So today I'm going to have a chat with you about scheduling options and schoolers. Now, this is something that I cover in Zero to Homeschool, including how to schedule out your resources. So please take a look in the show notes if you would like a course that walks you through all the how to plan and schedule info. Now, when most people start homeschooling, they don't even think about what sort of schedule they'll have. They just assume that they will follow the school year, which kind of makes sense, right? But when you start hearing about what other people are doing, it tends to be a bit of an aha moment in realising that we don't have to stick to the school schedule and do four terms per year of about 12 weeks each with a long summer holiday. There's no actual reason to stick to the school timetable. We can structure our year however we like. Now, that's exciting, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming because looking at that huge chunk of blank time that is going to be filled in whether we like it or not can be rather scary. Now, if you feel a little bit uneasy about striking out and making your own schedule, here are some reasons not to stick to the school timetable. So first of all, you can arrange all of your activities to suit you. You you don't have to fit them into an outside schedule. You can do them when they suit your needs. Second, you can go away on holidays and popular places while other kids are in school, which is much cheaper and quieter. Now, I think this is a huge perk of homeschooling. We can go on cheap holidays and we can have the beaches and the museums and the theme parks, all of the popular sites pretty much to ourselves. Many families I know, and this includes ours, actually stay home more over school holidays because they want to avoid the crowds. Third, kids don't forget their maths or their memory work or their foreign language over a really long summer break. And less review when you start up again means that you do less work overall for better results. Fourth, And this may be hard to believe if you're struggling at the moment, but if you keep things fun, your kids won't actually want a long break. So that school holiday relief doesn't actually exist in every family. If your kids like what they do, then they won't actually want six weeks off from it. Fifth, you can be spontaneous. Fifth, you can be spontaneous and you can take advantage of opportunities as they arise because you're creating your own schedule. And finally, but maybe most importantly, you're much less likely to burn out, and that means both you and the kids, because you can keep a slower overall pace and have breaks whenever you need them. Okay, hopefully you're convinced that thinking outside the school schedule is worthwhile, so now I'm going to share a few common and homeschool-attested ideas that work for many families and may be more convenient for you than the school year. So first up is actually just to follow the school year, which is a bit of a surprise. So I know I just said that you don't have to, but if it works for you, you definitely can. So in Australia, you will have four terms a year with two week breaks between each term and a longer summer holiday. Now, this is a great option if one parent is a teacher or if you have some kids at school and some homeschooling, or if you interact a lot with schooling families. You're busy while they're busy and you're free when they're free. So it can work. But if you're not tied to the school system in any way, one of these other options. First up is year-round homeschooling. Now, this doesn't mean that you work hard, non-stop, five days a week, all year with no holidays. Instead, you'll potter along all year and you'll have holidays as you need them. Your children won't forget everything over a long summer break and you get to keep a more relaxed pace. This is a fantastic method if you have a more natural learning or interest-led approach because you generally want to follow your interests all the time and you don't want long holidays for no real reason. When life is learning and learning is life, holidays become a little bit irrelevant, to be honest, because it's difficult to see what you actually are meant to stop doing. So if your kid wants to keep playing their instrument or building their model or continue their month-long science experiment, you don't have to tell them to stop. I find that the breaks in this case are more for parents who want a bit of a guilt-free week to step back and sleep in and have a bit more of a rest. And if you take year-round homeschooling a little bit further, you may be doing what's called tidal homeschooling. I'll link to it in the show notes. Now with tidal homeschooling, 
Now with Tidal Homeschooling, you don't have a schedule as such, but instead you follow the natural ebb and flow of learning and energy. So sometimes you're inspired and you're busy and you're getting so much done, you're ticking all the boxes, your Instagram account looks fantastic and you feel like an awesome homeschooling parent. But other times you're relaxed, you're not very busy, you're not so productive and maybe that's when you start to fret that you're not getting enough done. But in many ways this quiet time is a recovery time from your previous busy period and also the incubation time for your next busy period. Now I like this concept of tidal homeschooling a lot because it seems to be the way we work naturally. Sometimes we get so much done and other times we feel more relaxed and cruisy. Both states seem to be necessary and to balance each other out and you find when you look back over the longer term it's easy to see that overall a lot is getting done. Okay, so being inspired by year-round or tidal homeschooling is all well and good if you unschool or if you're a pretty relaxed homeschooler, but if you are a bit more correct, you might want to book in some time away from the maths books and history lessons. So this will be time when you don't have a schedule and you and your children get some unstructured time and also a time when you can book holidays, you can tell people that you're free, all that kind of stuff. So apart from following the school year, you can try a few other options of breaking up your work time. So the first up is to do six weeks on and one week off plus a longer holiday once or twice a year. Now this can really help to avoid burnout because of the regular breaks. Alternatively, you can try four weeks on and one week off year round. Again, you'll avoid burnout by avoiding long blocks of work and it's pretty easy to get through four weeks and the holiday weeks seem to come around pretty regularly. Now these two options may sound a bit slack, but when you add up the weeks that you're working, you'll realize that you're doing as many work weeks as school. If you need to mark attendance, you can easily tick off all your required days with both the six-week and the four-week work blocks, even if you choose a more non-traditional weekly schedule such as a four-day work week. And of course, you can come up with any other schedule that suits you. So if you have a FIFO parent or a military parent or other outside schedule, you can do more book work when they're away and less when they're at home. So that could mean that on the 10 days when your partner is away working, You can do lots of book work and then on the five days at their home, you don't do any. That's fine. You don't even have to stick to the normal calendar week. And if you have a big event coming up, like you've got a new baby or a house move, then you can make sure you allow for plenty of time off to reduce the stress at that time. So just stand back and look at six month blocks or even the entire year just to reassure yourself that yes, you will still fit plenty of work time in. Now, when you're planning this out as well, think about the subjects that you will cover. So you don't need to do all subjects all the time. For example, if you've decided on a year-round schedule, you can do three-month blocks of history, geography, health, and logic. You know, just pulling subjects out of the air here. If you're doing four weeks on and one off, you can rotate the subjects through the blocks to give you and your kids some variation. Subjects through the blocks to give you and your kids some variation. So for the first block, you can do history. For the second, you do geography and so on. Breaking them up like this also allows you to spend more quality time on each one rather than jumping from subject to subject all week. You really do have lots of flexibility, so don't stick to a schedule that stresses you out and doesn't work. Feel free to experiment and change things around until you find what works. It will change over time and that is perfectly fine. As you get more experience and as your family grows and changes, you are definitely allowed to change your schedule around to fit. All right, so what about us? What do we do in my family? We are pretty relaxed in terms of curriculum and book work. We don't do a huge amount of it and in work a lot of the time. So for us, it all depends on the lifestyle we're living at that time. So when we're in a house and we have a fairly predictable routine, we usually do four weeks on and one week off. After four weeks, we're ready for a bit of a break. Now in those four weeks, book work has to be done Monday to Friday. I actually refuse to help on Saturday or Sunday. So if there is a good reason, like if we've been away, I'll help out on Saturday morning, but that's it. And it's the same for the weeks off. They're actually weeks off and we don't let book work creep into them. Now, I find that I need that break, so I protect it. And I find this actually works pretty well. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's a bit of treat a mean, keep them keen or something like that. So I find that saying no to a grammar or history lesson on a week off tends to make them more attractive overall. Now, it can be a bit trickier when kids have projects they're enthusiastic about, but my kids tend to do those pretty independently. Life is learning for us most of the time, and we don't feel that these things are a chore, so helping out with them usually doesn't feel like it's tiring me. So helping out with them usually doesn't feel like it's tiring me out. If it does, I will say so, and we'll work out exactly what they need and when I can help. 
Now, usually it's something small, just like ordering a book or bouncing ideas off me, having a bit of a discussion, looking up something and spending five minutes brainstorming with them. So it doesn't feel like a chore. And after we've done that, they can return to their project and I can return to whatever I'm doing. And right now too, we're also kind of living by Gabrielle's university schedule, so we make sure that when she's on holidays, we can all do things together and we all get time off as a family, even if it isn't in our scheduled week off block. All right, so that's when we're living in a house, but we travel a lot too and long-term travel, so we have spent over a year at a time with no fixed address. Obviously, this gives us more unpredictability, but we still tend to find a bit of a rhythm. Because we slow travel, we organise as we go and we're pretty relaxed about it. Uh, It's quite different to only having three days in a place and spending them in a frenzy, you know, cramming everything in before we go on to the next quick stop. An area which can be a month or even more if we're really enjoying it. So when we're travelling either in a caravan in Australia or in Airbnbs overseas, we're pretty random and we don't really have a schedule, which is my preferred way to operate. We have to take advantage of opportunities in each area, and if we're somewhere that has lots to do, I am not going to spend days cooped up working through a curriculum that we can do absolutely anywhere. We're going to be going out, exploring, visiting museums and castles, hiking, experimenting with the local food, all of the things that come our way. Our bookwork gets put aside for experiences, and we have no real work schedule. However, we always keep reading, playing games, doing our hobbies, all that kind of stuff. But when we're having quiet weeks or days, we will spend a bit of time doing bookwork and curriculum-related activities. We find we actually need regular quiet times when travelling, when we spend a bit of time in one place, otherwise we get burnt out and travel fatigued, and we don't actually appreciate the fantastic things all around us. And those times are when we return to the rhythm and routine of more traditionally rhythm and routine of more traditionally academic activities. And that brings me to my most important part, which is scheduling time off. I know from personal experience that it can be really, really hard as a homeschooling parent to switch off. And you may have noticed when I was talking about our schedules that we have time built in for that. We actually have non-negotiable time and we have regular weeks off. And I don't spend all that time preparing for the next burst because I need a break. So I read books, we play games, we do craft, we get outdoors. And although we do this during our regular weeks too, the time off does feel more relaxed and it gives my brain the rest it needs to be able to get back into it with enthusiasm. And I really think that building in that rest time, that time when you can be free from so many expectations without feeling guilty and neglectful is really, really important. Any long-term homeschooler will tell you that if you keep your nose to the grindstone all week, every week, you will get tired and burnt out and turn into the grumpy, no fun parent and you will want to run away from your life. And we kind of want to avoid that. (laughs) So please don't skip the rest times. Don't be tempted to fill them with enriching activity that will frazzle you. And don't be scared to say, no, I can't do that right now because I'm having a break. The world will not stop and your kids will not need therapy for the rest of their lives because you weren't available and willing 24-7, 365 days a year. A bit of 24-7, 365 days a year. A bit of boredom or independence is actually a great thing. So I hope that's been helpful and like I said at the beginning, I go through setting up your yearly schedule and breaking it down into blocks and weeks in Zero to Homeschool and show you how to fit your curriculum and other activities into your chosen schedule among many other setting up homeschool type of activities. If you're interested in going through this in more detail, there is a link in the show notes. All right, now off you go, print out a yearly calendar and start blocking out time. I would love to hear what you come up with. Uh, Please feel free to share in the comments or email me any pictures and details of what you come up with. Thank you so much for joining me and I will chat with you again next episode. Until then, happy homeschooling.